This is Twit. Well, folks, it's my favorite part of the show. We actually get to bring in a guest to drop some knowledge on the Twit, right? Today we have Michael Amori, He's CEO of Virtual Linux. Welcome to the show, Michael. Hi, guys. Thank you for having me. Appreciate it. Now, we our audience is a huge spectrum of experiences that whether it's the entry level person all the way up to CISOs, CTOs and CEOs, and they some of them love to actually hear people's origin stories. So can you take us through a journey through tech and what brought you to Virtualytics? Yeah, sure. Um, so I was um, I had a background in uh, physics and then ended up working on Wall Street for many years. So 15 years in finance. So seemingly very unrelated field. Um, but as part of that job, um, for the last part of my job, I was in charge of a team of data scientists using a lot of data science techniques to understand what was going on in the markets. That's what our trading desk did. And then um, just at a Caltech alumni event, by chance, I met uh, a professor at Caltech, actually an astronomer uh, who was working on very complex, huge data sets. Uh, and was using new techniques to analyze the data from these data sets. So he was using the uh, combination of AI to help you find the key patterns to focus in on in the data, combined with 3D visualizations of those insights so that the human could really understand what was going on in data uh, much faster than with normal techniques. I was really uh, fascinated by that. I saw how that could really be used by someone like me and probably by many others in the world. And so I decided to quit my job and started the company to try to uh, bring this technology to a lot of enterprises and to the government. It's amazing. Now we've been talking a lot about AI. And of course, in a recent survey, Deloitte actually said that 67% of executives struggle with data access and use and analytics. What do you perceive the evolution of AI actually helping to bridge that gap here? Yeah. So I think, and, and Kurt was also talking about it earlier about the fact that there aren't that as many trained people as you need right now. There's a shortage of, of the talent needed. I think AI, uh, if, if executed properly, can bring to the human who does not need to be necessarily a coder or a mathematician, can bring to the human an additional amount of knowledge that enables the human to make better decisions. And so the key is for the AI to do it in a simple enough way so that uh, people without the training can actually understand what's going on. And that, that's, that's really the challenge. And that's, that's the challenge that we are, are set on at Virtualytics. So when I talk to a lot of organizations, a lot of them are saying, okay, I want to get involved with AI. I want to be able to feed this data, train this data, and then produce some really good analytics and insights out of it. Unfortunately, I just don't know how to prepare myself for it. What, what are some really good ways for organizations to prepare themselves to benefit from some of the AI advancements you're talking about? Yeah, I think in the, at the beginning of the analytics pipeline, you always have the data exploration phase. Okay, so that's the part where you're faced with a data set and you kind of got to understand the gist of what's going on so that you can then understand what path should I follow after that. Now, that data exploration phase is not well served right now with the tools that are available. So you need to have really specialized, trained people who know how to do data exploration in a sophisticated way to really know what's the best next step. That's where you need AI tools that can do the data exploration phase at, at Virtualytics, we call it the intelligent exploration part that can enable you to really understand what's, what are the main things going on in your data set before you even move on and think of anything else. So it's interesting you said that because a lot of, I'm actually reading other stats here that says less than a third of firms actually identify as being data driven. And they, even though they want to really heavily invest in AI and analytics, do you, do you feel like companies need to do something else to shift their focus here to change their narrative in order to get there? Cause it sounds like this tool being able to actually help them get their data ready is part of that. that that's right. So, so I think there, there are two big stumbling blocks. So just, let me just be precise. The first part is the data prep. So like the data wrangling, that part takes people a long time. And that part just requires, is very time intensive. 
But then you have the data exploration part, which is also very difficult in a different way, in the sense that people don't approach it in a way that allows them to let the data tell them what's really going on in the data. So in that sense, Lou, in that sense, many organizations end up not being data driven because they're not doing the data exploration uh, full justice. They're not going all the way in, in the data exploration part. So now they're leaving behind all the, all the pearls, all the nuggets that are in the data. They're leaving those behind. Now, I've actually recently talked to Adion, an organization that does these, does this pipeline for pharmaceutical companies around some of the data that comes out of their, their trials and so on. And getting data ready from the trial data is, and of course, ingesting other streams of other data streams like social networks and people's history is a really hard, cleansing that data, getting it ready for these models is a very hard thing. And it sounds like they could use something like this to help get their data ready. What's the guarantee that that organizations once they pipe their data through this these models that the data that comes out the other side isn't missing some of the you know the the um the fidelity that they're hoping that they need for it right um so i think that's where you have to first of all have ai output clear explanation we call you know explainable ai explaining why the ai thinks that what it found is important so that you as a human are not just asked to just move on blindly without understanding why this is potentially important that's that's really key so that way you as a human can look at what the ai found and you can see oh it's important because of this this and that okay that makes sense to me and now it passes the common sense test i can move on to the next step that's that's a key part of what you need to do i think so I, I want to get a little bit on to, you know, AI and the fact that there's obviously always privacy, you know, ethical situations and, and biases that come along with AI. It, it seems to be a hot button topic that gets these days, especially when you're talking about making data driven decisions based off of data. How do you think or envision the concept of responsible AI here? Like what, what, what can organizations do to, to ensure they're adopting in that matter? Yeah. So I think when it comes to responsible or ethical use of AI, there, there are various dimensions to it. One of them, as you said, is to make sure that privacy and security are dealt with. Um, and obviously for that, uh, there, are, there are many different things that, that need to be done for that. For example, for, for our platform, we don't actually get to see the client data. We are, ours is just a tool that the company can then use uh, uh, to, 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 to do the, its own analysis without us being privy to the data. But the other part, and this goes back to what we we're talking about just, just a minute ago, you need to make sure that the AI explains why it is that you should believe something before you move on to the next thing. Because, you know, imagine when you're dealing with really important decisions like Kurt, you know, you were talking about the government being involved. We, uh, we work a lot with the government, uh, you don't want certain like major key decisions to just be a black box. They need to be explained. And that's kind of the ethical part of AI, right? Otherwise, otherwise, you know, you're, 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 you're letting a machine make decisions that could imply life or death or, or, or could imply major, uh, major consequences. And so that's, I think that's part of it is just making sure that everything is really explainable, understandable uh, for the human. 